وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول A question I asked Can you give me some advice on studying عقيدة please الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على عبد الله ورسوله نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين When it comes to studying عقيدة Like studying any other science in Islam, it is really important to break your study down into phases and stages and at each stage to take a text, a primer or a core text that you study in detail. As for the issue of studying a primer or a core text in detail, then it is as the poet said, فَمَا حَوَى الْغَايَةَ فِي أَلْفِ سَنَةِ شَخْصٌ فَخُذْ مِنْ كُلِّ فَنٍ أَحْسَنَ بِحِفْظِ مَتْنٍ جَامِعٍ لِلْرَاجِحِ تَأْخُذُهُ عَلَى مُفِيدِ النَّاصِحِ He said that you will not achieve your goal in a thousand years. A person will not achieve a goal in a thousand years. They won't be able to read every single book on every single topic and every single science in a thousand years. So take from every science the best of it. And that's true in Aqidah as well. You take the best of that science, the most valuable books, the most important, the most comprehensive. How do you take the best of it? Bihifthi matnin jami' By memorizing a text which is comprehensive. So at each level of your study, at each stage of your study, you need to bring a text that is comprehensive. And it's not just comprehensive, but it's comprehensive in containing that which is rajih. Either because the content is generally speaking correct, it's a book that is generally speaking, the content is considered praiseworthy and valid, or because it's a book which is mu'tamad, it's a book which is considered to be the standard book at that particular level in that particular science. And you should take that book, ta'khuduhu ala mufid al nasihi. You should take that book from someone who is able to benefit you because of their knowledge and expertise on the topic, and they genuinely are looking out for what is good for you, they are sincere towards you, they want to nurture you and develop you. That's the type of person that you should be taking that book from. So if we look now at the science of Aqidah, and we look generally at the levels of the science of Aqidah, then the way we have sort of structured this within al madrasa al Umariya, or the way we've seen or looked at this is, generally, first of all, we will take a madkhal, and the madkhal, the purpose is to introduce you to the topic, to make you think about it, to make you understand where, what aqidah is, what kind of books have been written on it, what kind of synonyms are there, because you might only look for books that have the word aqidah and miss the books that have the word iman or the word sharia or the word sunnah or any of the other synonyms for the word aqidah in there to understand a little bit about how it developed, the history of the science, the first person to uh, write it as a separate science, uh, to understand where it's mentioned in the Quran, in the Sunnah, and so on, to get a general, you know, sort of overview of the topic. And to cover some of the masail, the issues which are important before you begin, like the issue of Sunnah and Bid'ah and things like that. After taking an introduction to the topic, you now reach the very first level. And the very first level really is what we would probably call marhala ta'sis, the level of getting the foundations, the foundation level, the beginning level. So the madkhal was not really aqid at all. It was about getting ready to study aqid. Now you have started at the foundation level. And the purpose of the foundation level is to get a good tasawwur, a good picture of the science, to get a good grip of some of the most important parts, 
but not to overly worry about dalil, not to overly worry about evidences, not to look at ikhtilaf, uh, even though ikhtilaf in aqidah is less, of course, uh, than ikhtilaf in other sciences, or it should be, not to look at, you know, sort of details and specialization at that point, but just to start by getting the foundations right. There are lots and lots of books that we could recommend at that level. And uh, you know, from among them would be, for example, Thalathatul uh, Usul, the three fundamental principles, the Qawa'idul Arba'a, the four rules, uh, or the four basic rules, and other books which give you a basic foundation and understanding on the topic of Aqidah. Of course, those two books on the topic of At-Tawheed, which really you would possibly, or you could at least possibly divide Aqidah into two. We can divide it into Tawheed, which is dealing with worshipping Allah and the Aqidah issues relating to worshipping Allah alone. And we can divide it into general Aqidah, which deals with other issues like the concept of Iman, the position of the Sahaba, for example, uh, and uh, some of the pillars of Iman and so on, that are not related specifically or are not directly uh, connected to worshipping Allah alone. So if we talk about worshipping Allah alone and we talk about that as being called Tawheed, as a branch of Aqidah and then general Aqidah, which covers the other topics. So in terms of Tawheed, a good foundation level book would be, for example, Thalathatul Usul, Three Fundamental Principles, and likewise Al-Qawa'idul Arba'ah, The Four Basic Rules. In terms of moving up a level, and you're talking about the level of Tadlil, the level of getting evidences, then probably a good recommendation in Tawheed would be Kitab al-Tawheed. And in general Aqidah would be probably the likes of Al-Aqidah al-Wasatiyah, where you start to get some evidences and you start to look at not just what is correct. And that's not to say the other books don't contain evidences because books of Aqidah typically are full of evidences, but that the a book like Kitab al tawheed is heavy on evidence and on virtual istidlal. The reason or the connection between that evidence and between the chapter title, for example. You then look at, you know, for example, Al-Aqidah al-Wasatiyah. And then perhaps later on you move on beyond that. Take something like Al-Aqidah al-Tahawiyah, for example. And onwards, and there are many, many other books. And, and again, I don't want to give a comprehensive list here. I think that the whole purpose of Al-Madrasa al umariyah inshallah, is that we have a comprehensive Aqidah course, inshallah, along with our other Islamic uh, science courses that builds you up from the Madkhal, the introduction, all the way through many, many, many books beginning to end until we reach the end of uh, you know, of what we are able to share with you. So I think rather than preempt that, uh, it would just be, I'm just giving you a real, just very, very brief overview of how you go about studying Aqidah. Now, I don't want to forget to highlight the second part of what the poet said, that you need to take this Aqidah from someone who is Mufid, they can benefit you because they're qualified. They understand the topic. They themselves are people with the right aqidah. And likewise, they are looking to nurture you and develop you. They're not going to give you the complicated things before the simple things. They're going to take you step by step with tadarruj, bit by bit and step by step until you reach a level where you have memorized several core texts in aqidah and you have studied several more. And that's how generally I would approach the topic of Aqidah. But of course, again, I would emphasize that in terms of the uh, syllabus for al madrasa al umariyah going on to you know, what we hope to be able to launch in the future, then that syllabus is quite a lot more comprehensive than what I have mentioned. And what I mentioned is just a general 
overview of uh, the idea or the concept of studying Aqidah. So I hope that that has answered the question and I will answer whichever one's best. If you have any questions you'd like to see answered as part of this series, then you can email us at questions at amau.org.